So I grew up in a house of musicians. My dad was a band director, a uh, school band director for 39 years. And so we grew up, I started playing instruments when I was in fourth grade, started with the trombone, and then realized that the trombone never got to really play any what I thought then was cool stuff. Now I know better, Nick Baez. Uh, but, and so I switched to saxophone in fifth grade and I played sax all the way through junior high and high school and college and in college I was a music major so I studied music and all the intricacies of music and how to play music and teach music and all of that. And one of the things that we, when we listen to music, one of the things that most people are really drawn to is the sound the notes or the words that people are singing and we like a melody, uh, we enjoy the way a groove happens and we can really get into it or we can dance to it. But as I got older and as I learned more about music, I learned that it wasn't just the sound that made music, it was also the silence. In music there are music notes and each note is worth a different value of time. There are also things called rests. Rests in music are measured silence and they're intentional. They're put there on purpose. The person who wrote the song didn't just write a continuous stream of notes, they also put in rests because rest is part of the music. If you listen to, let's say jazz music, a junior high jazz band when somebody plays a solo, um, there's lots of just kind of guessing what notes to play. When you get into high school, the notes are pretty solid, but it's because the notes start to feel solid that it becomes a constant stream of notes. And so a high school jazz band solo many times sounds like and it's just on and on and there's never any break there is just a constant stream of notes you listen to a professional jazz solo and it's amazing how they take the notes and combine them with the rests and it sounds so much better and even for the listener there's just this relief when the notes stop and the rests begin. Rests are measured silence. In music, it's forced silence. And I was thinking about that in our life, how, especially around here, especially in my life, man, if I don't have any measured silence, if I don't have any forced silence, a lot of times I just just constant notes. And in the Bible, it's amazing that there is this exact thing demonstrated. The word Selah uh, is used 74 times in the Bible. 71 of those times is in the Psalms. And 31 of the 39 times that it's used in Psalms, it's used in Psalms to the choir director. Now, I tell you that because there is not a direct translation for the word Selah. We're not exactly sure what it precisely means, but the fact that it's used so musically indicates that it likely had something to do with pausing, resting, reflecting, on something that had just been said or played, something sung. And I, that, that means something to me because I know that I need to be more disciplined in the resting. I wanna do all the notes and some, and even though the notes are good, like they, they may be good notes, it might be ministry, it might be with my family, it, it could be whatever, but the resting is part of the music. And I want to read you a song. I'm going to try and do this walking down the street without falling down or tripping over a crack. But, or my page turning so I can't see it anymore. 
psalm. Here we go. Sorry. 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 Okay. Psalm 67. This is for the director of music with stringed instruments. A psalm. A song. May God be gracious. Oh, now, as I read this, I'm going to rest when I come upon the word Selah. In some translations, it says interlude. Like, hey, just pause and listen. Verse 1, Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. That your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the people praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Then when the land will yield its harvest and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us and all the ends of the earth will fear him. When I do that, when I read through and I try and intentionally pause, I find myself going, okay, have I paused long enough? Maybe as you're watching this video and I'm reading it, you're going like, okay, okay, Jeff, I've, I've thought about it enough. I'm totally with you. <laughs> I get it. And I guess maybe that's my point. Can I challenge you as I am challenged to make pausing, make the rests part of the music in your life how can you make stopping for a moment maybe for a season part of the music right now being asked to stay home and not get together with friends and not being able to do sports and and not going to school every day and, and having the routine <laughs> I wonder how much of this is a forced silence where the director, God, has written it into the music. And there have been songs that I have played through the years in orchestras or bands where the part that I have is mostly rests. I didn't tend to like those songs. But I was in an orchestra one time where I was playing a part and I literally had four notes in the entire song. And it became one of my favorite songs. Because while I was resting, I was getting to experience the rest of the music. What does God want you to experience in the song that he's writing? How does he call you to rest and say, hey, slow down. I know you want to stay busy. I know you're bored. I'm calling you to rest. And you're about to experience some glorious music. So God, come and do that in us because we don't want to rest. Write the rest into our music, that it would bring us life and walk with us every day in Jesus' name. Amen.